The demon king said, we present you with a special yellow robe. From now on, address me as great sage equal to heaven. Got it? The Jade Emperor was furious and sent his generals to eliminate Ria Khan. Evening Star pleaded, if he wants that title, grant it to him. Let him have the empty title, Great Sage. The Jade Emperor said, you're right. Let's do as you say. Sun Ria Khan, today I grant you the title, Great Sage equal to heaven. Your job is to manage the Celestial Peach Orchard. Ria Khan said, great, I finally have a job. He really wanted to try the peaches, so he picked some and ate to his heart's content. One day, while napping, he felt someone there picking his peaches. Thief! Great sage, it's us. We were sent by the Queen Mother to pick peaches. She will be holding a peach banquet soon. The great sage asked, did the Queen Mother invite me to the peach party? Wilkong rode his somersault cloud and arrived at the banquet courtyard. He devoured all the delicious food and drinks. Afterward, he decided to flee the scene. He ended up at Tishita Palace, where the Supreme Elder Lord lives. He headed straight for the pill chamber. Next to the furnace, there were five large gourds. No one's around, let me just try a few. He ate all five gourds. Oh no, I've caused big trouble. I'd better return to Flower and Fruit Mountain. In a flash, Wukong returned to the Water Curtain Cave. Journey to the West, Episode 6, The Uncontrollable Wukong. Sun Wukong arrived at the Peach Banquet. He indulged in delicious food and fine wine and got thoroughly drunk. The banquet was made a mess and turned upside down. The celestial officials went to report to the Jade Emperor. The Jade Emperor was furious and sent heavenly soldiers to capture Sun Wukong. At this time, Guanin Bodhisattva also came to attend the banquet. Seeing the tragic scene, she went to the Hall of Divine Mist to see the Jade Emperor. The Jade Emperor recounted all the trouble Sun Wukong had caused to the Bodhisattva. Wanin Bodhisattva thought for a moment and then said, Your Majesty, please rest assured. I recommend a divine general to you. He can definitely capture this out-of-control monkey. Who is it? you ask. It is your nephew, Erlang Shen. He has subdued many demons and monsters before. He is definitely up to the task. Upon hearing this, the Jade Emperor immediately ordered Erlang Shen to go and capture Sun Wukong. Erlang Shen led his soldiers to the Water Curtain Cave on Flower and Fruit Mountain. They saw at the entrance a large banner with Great Sage Equal to Heaven written on it. When Erlang Shen saw Sun Wukong, he said, You impudent monkey! How dare you call yourself the great sage equal to heaven? Wukong replied, Who are you to be so bold? Erlang Shen said, I am Erlang Shen, the Jade Emperor's nephew. Today, I will definitely capture you. Wukong said, Oh, I know you. Your mom is the Jade Emperor's sister. She came to the mortal world and married a mortal man named Yan and had you. Go home, Junior. I'm not going to fight you. There's no need. Why don't you run back to the heavenly courts and bring the four heavenly kings to challenge me instead? Hearing this, Erlang Shen was furious. Impudent monkey, how dare you? Watch how I cut you down. Erlang Shen was truly skilled. Wukong fought him for more than 300 rounds without a clear winner. At this moment, Erlang Shen transformed. He grew to an enormous height, wielding two large swords. With a blue face, fangs, and flaming hair, he fiercely slashed down at Wukong's head. Wukong also used his magic powers. He became as gigantic as Erlang Shen. He held his golden staff and the two started to fight fiercely again. The little monkeys saw this and panicked. They're so tall, menacing, 
and mighty. They were terrified. Some ran away, fleeing in utter fright. Wilkong saw that his little monkeys were scared and running in all directions. He himself felt a bit uneasy and wanted to escape too. Earl Angshan had already noticed this. Wilkong, don't even think about escaping. You better surrender, and I'll spare your life. Wilkong used the 72 transformations he'd learned and turned into a little sparrow. He flew up to a tree. Unexpectedly, Erlang Shen could also transform. He turned into a hawk and swooped down on the sparrow. Wilkong then turned into a cormorant. Erlang Shen turned into a great crane and swooped down on Wilkong. Wilkong quickly turned into a fish. Erlang Shen turned into a large osprey. Wilkong turned into a snake and slithered into the grass. Erlang Shen turned into a red crowned crane. He tried to eat the snake with his long beak. Wilkong ran from Erlang Shen until he was out of breath. He was terrified. The pagoda bearing heavenly king, the Bodhisattva, and the supreme elder lord came too. The heavenly king used a magic mirror to reveal Wilkong. Guanin Bodhisattva threw the willow branch from her vase, and it hit Wilkong on the head. Wilkong fell to the ground. The Supreme Lord pulled up his sleeves and took off the Vijra bracelet from his left arm and threw it. It trapped and tightly bound Wilkong. <laughs> Finally, they captured Wilkong and took him directly to the heavenly court. Sun Wilkong was escorted to the demon execution platform. But no matter if they used blades, fire, or lightning, Sun Wukong remained unscathed. The Jade Emperor asked, what should we do? The Supreme Elder Lord replied, that monkey ate too many celestial peaches, and drank a lot of celestial wine, and even stole and ate all of my golden pills. He has an indestructible body now. Ordinary methods can't harm him at all. I think it's best to hand him over to me. I'll put him in my 8 trigrams pill furnace and refine him. I'll extract my golden pills from his stomach. And he will naturally turn to ashes. Isn't that a good idea? The Jade Emperor said, All right, I'll leave him to you then. The Supreme Elder Lord took Wilkong back to his palace and locked him in the 8 trigrams pill furnace. Wilkong was very clever. He immediately identified the directions, found the Sun position within the eight trigrams, and squatted there. Sun represents wind, so in that spot, there was no fire, only wind. However, the smoke from the fire still affected him. In the end, Wilkong's eyes were reddened by the smoke. But eventually, they turned into fiery golden eyes. He wiped his eyes with his sleeve. His eyes were bright and had gained the ability to see through demons and magic. After 49 days, the furnace fire finally went out. The Supreme Elder Lord prepared to open the furnace to retrieve his pills. Wilkong heard it from the inside. The furnace is being opened. He saw a beam of light and immediately leaped out. Wilkong jumped out of the furnace, kicked it over, and ran away. The boys tending the fire were also knocked over. The Supreme Elder Lord went to catch him but was also knocked down. Wilkong pulled his golden staff out of his ear and started swinging wildly. The gods were in a complete panic. Wilkong fought his way to the outside of the Hall of Divine Mist. The Jade Emperor saw the situation was dire. The generals couldn't hold him back. He immediately sent word to the Thunderclap Monastery and requested the Buddha's help. The Buddha quickly gathered his disciples, the Venerable Ananda and Mahakasyapa, and swiftly arrived at the Hall of Divine Mist. They saw the gods fighting Yukon. The Buddha decreed, stop fighting, heavenly soldiers and generals. Invite the great sage here. I wish to see what powers he has, 
and what skills he possesses. Wilkong, still furious, shouted upon seeing the Buddha, Who are you to question me? The Buddha smiled and said, I am the Buddha of the Western world. Where do you come from, and why are you so agitated? Wilkong replied, I am the great sage equal to heaven. My abilities are vast, and my skills are many. Even the Jade Emperor fears me. I believe whoever has the greatest ability should sit on the celestial throne. Upon hearing this, the Buddha laughed without humor. You little monkey, how dare you have such wicked thoughts. You even want to seize the Jade Emperor's throne. Let me tell you, the Jade Emperor is no ordinary being. He has been cultivating since childhood, enduring 1,750 eons. Each eon lasts 129,600 years. Think about how many years he has cultivated to be able to enjoy the ultimate Tao. You are merely a beast who has just taken human form. How dare you speak such grandiose words and boast so arrogantly? You little rascal, you'd better take refuge in me. And stop spouting nonsense and causing trouble. Otherwise, your life will be in danger. Wilkong said, I have great skills. I possess the 72 transformations. I can ride the somersault cloud, and I'm immortal. Why can't I become the Jade Emperor? Buddha said, all right, let's make a bet. All you have to do is jump out of my palm in one leap. If you succeed, you win and will stop fighting. I will take the Jade Emperor with me. And you can sit on the throne in the Hall of Divine Mist. If you can't jump out of my palm, you will descend to the mortal world as a demon and cultivate for a few more eons. Wilkong secretly rejoiced and thought, Hey, with one somersault, I can travel 108,000 miles. How big can your palm be, Buddha? Isn't it just about a foot wide? This will be easy. I will win for sure. I'm going to be the new Jade Emperor. Wilkong said to the Buddha, All right, you better not go back on your word. The Buddha replied, We must always keep our promises. The Buddha extended his right hand. It was about the size of a lotus leaf, not very big. Wilkong jumped onto the Buddha's palm. He shouted, Here I go. And he somersaulted away. Before landing, he saw five huge pillars in the distance surrounded by mist. He thought, Wow, this must be the end of heaven. I've reached the edge of the universe. If I go back from this point, I'll win. I can take the throne and become the Jade Emperor. Then he thought, no, I need to leave a mark. What if the Buddha doesn't acknowledge my win? Thinking of this, he plucked a hair, blew on it, and it turned into a brush. Then he picked the middle pillar and wrote, the great sage equal to heaven was here. Maybe it's not enough, let me also leave a personal mark. So, Wilkong peed on the base of the pillar. Then he somersaulted back to Buddha and proudly said, I've reached the end of the heavens, and now I'm back. So, how about you tell the Jade Emperor to give me the throne of the celestial palace? The Buddha scolded, you mischievous monkey. You never left the palm of my hand. Wilkong looked down. On the Buddha's right middle finger were the words, The great sage equal to heaven was here, and there was even a smell of monkey urine. He thought, isn't this exactly what I did? Wilkong was shocked and absolutely couldn't believe it. I don't believe you. I have to check again. Just as Wilkong jumped up and tried to fly out again, Buddha flipped his palm and his five fingers instantly, turned into five mountains of gold, wood, water, fire, and earth. They joined to form the Five Elements Mountain. The Buddha gently trapped Sun Wilkong under the mountain. At this moment, the Jade Emperor and all the deities came out to thank Buddha. 
Finally, peace was restored to the world. This monkey is too powerful and troublesome. At this moment, a patrol officer reported, Buddha, the great sage equal to heaven, has stuck his head out. The Buddha took out a strip of paper from his sleeve. It had six golden characters on it. He handed it to Ananda, instructing him to place it on the mountaintop. Once the mantra was placed on the mountaintop, the mountain seamlessly connected and settled so tightly into the earth, no one could lift or pry them apart. It was as if they had taken root. Ryu Kong's head could no longer emerge. He was obediently trapped under the Five Elements Mountain. The Buddha, in his great mercy, summoned a local earth god and five guardian gods to guard the Five Elements Mountain. He instructed the earth god that when Ryu Kong was hungry, they could feed him balls of iron. If he was thirsty, they could give him molten copper to drink. But rest assured, when his sentence is over, someone will come to rescue him. Ryukong remained under the Five Elements Mountain for a full 500 years. Why didn't the Buddha reason with Sun Ryukong and make him understand his mistakes? Instead of trapping him under the Five Elements Mountain for 500 years? Look at the Jade Emperor and Evening Star. They tried all the gentle and peaceful methods, right? When you caused trouble, I gave you an official job. When you caused trouble again, I made you the great sage equal to heaven. But did it work for you? So, being kind to him didn't work especially during the second attempt to recruit him. Evening Star said, The Jade Emperor has granted you the title Great Sage. What did Ryukong think at that time? The Jade Emperor is scared of me. He mistook the Emperor's kindness, tolerance, care, and compassion, as everyone being afraid of him. That's the kind of person he was. He overestimated himself. This is Ryukong's arrogance. I think there is a reason for it. Ryu Kong is very powerful. Ordinary deities can't beat him. After Ryu Kong fought some of the deities, he felt he was indeed quite capable. He became arrogant enough to say that he could even defeat the Jade Emperor. I should be the Jade Emperor and sit on that throne. This is an extremely arrogant mindset. So, using compassion to reason with him is useless. Given Buddha's wisdom, he teaches according to the student's ability. At that time, Ryukong's inner demons had taken over. He was like a madman. So, he could not listen to any reason. He had to be stopped with force. First, using a method to subdue him. Then, slowly educating him once he calms down. Trapping him under a mountain is also a method of education. The Five Elements Mountain restrains his physical body. The Six-Syllable Mantra restrains his heart, his inner demons. The wildness within his heart, the restlessness, arrogance, and the reckless fury only the six-syllable mantra can suppress it. When the mantra is placed atop the mountain, perhaps then Ryu Kong's heart will no longer harbor arrogance and rebellion, and he may find peace. The Five Elements Mountain and the Six-Syllable Mantra become one. One restrains the body, the other the mind, so he remains subdued. It's actually quite a good opportunity for cultivation. Sun Wukong is extremely skilled and capable. So why does he always cause trouble and achieve nothing? In summary, he's too young. Being too young means he hasn't experienced much of life's ups and downs. 
It was fortunate for him that he wanted to learn skills when young. And once he started, he found a good master and quickly gained abilities. Then he became arrogant, and with arrogance, he caused a lot of trouble. So, to summarize, there are roughly four types of situations for a person. The first type is having neither virtue nor ability. What would the result be? Having neither virtue nor ability leads to a mundane life, a very ordinary and unremarkable life, because if you lack both. For example, ability at least helps you solve problems such as eating and working, right? But if you lack both virtue and ability, your way of working might be quite unbearable. It's like living day to day without a future. He achieves nothing in his life. The second type is somewhat like Sun Wukong. Having ability but no virtue leads to endless troubles. Especially for Sun Wukong, he might have done a lot, but he lacks the discernment between good and bad. He doesn't understand. In fact, in our lives, what usually attracts people, especially young people, who haven't seen much of the world, it's often bad things. Because learning to do good things, like learning a good profession, such as becoming a good carpenter or tailor, or becoming a good lawyer, requires a lot of time and diligent study. You need to spend years of effort to learn it. So, people without ambition cannot spend so much time doing such a hard thing. But someone such as Sun Wukong had the opportunity. But he lacked one thing, virtue. On the other hand, there are those with virtue but no ability. For those with virtue but no ability, the world is at peace. He is virtuous. He is a person with a kind and compassionate heart. Indeed, he has virtue but no ability. As long as he has this kind heart and virtue, he has a good hope. Then the world is at peace, everything is good. But among this type of people, there are two levels. The first level is a peaceful and relatively good life. They don't cause trouble, but they also don't have great abilities. However, when your virtue reaches a certain level of excellence, it will produce a kind of magic. This magic is that it attracts capable people to assist you in doing what you want to do. Take Liu Bai during the Three Kingdoms period, he had a good character. When you have a bit of virtue and a good reputation, you will attract people like Guan Yu, Zhang Fei, Zhuge Liang, Xiao Yun, and others. These talented individuals will help you. In terms of warfare and martial arts, actually, Liu Bai was quite ordinary. The same with his intelligence. He achieved such a great career just by being a bit virtuous. He was virtuous but not capable. But in the end, he attracted capable people to help him achieve his goals. This is the third type. The fourth type is those who are both virtuous and capable. They will have a prosperous life and expand it to new heights. You need both virtue and capability. That means you have great wisdom, high martial skills, and high cultivation. You see the world differently. You might see further, broader, more practically, and better. If a virtuous and capable person has a high state of life, they can benefit all beings. For example, becoming a good emperor or an excellent president. Not waging wars and letting people live good lives. Improving social security and welfare. These all show their capabilities. For those who are virtuous and capable, their careers will be limitless. Sun Wukong's behavior reminds me a lot of young people. When they first start a job or enter the workforce. In the story with Wukong, what are his strengths? Why is he so arrogant? He has skills, martial arts, and transformations, right? His martial arts are like magic. 
Even minor deities can't defeat him, much less humans. Typical demons or gangsters can't beat him either. So, with these abilities, he naturally becomes arrogant. He has that reason to be arrogant. With this attitude, even when the Jade Emperor gave him a position, he didn't do things well. The second time round, he thought the Jade Emperor was afraid of him. He stole from the orchard he was guarding and took whatever he liked. He's a thief. He expects to be the great sage equal to heaven. Greater than the Jade Emperor, he is to be the greatest god. But what kind of things does this god do? He commits petty theft and even steals from his own people. The difference in thought and action is like night and day. You have ambitions higher than the sky. I am the greatest. But the actions done are all something a petty human thief would do. Isn't this the greatest irony? Such a huge disparity. It shows that you have almost no cultivation. So, what's the downside? Having such arrogance with lofty ambitions, even though he has the ability. In the end, he only caused trouble and hurt everyone. He offended everyone from heaven to earth and even the underworld. He altered the records of life and death in the underworld, remember? In the end, he became hated by all. He ended up with no way out. Finally, Buddha came and trapped him under a mountain. Why could the Buddha do it? Let me remind everyone, the way of the world is very mysterious. In my study of Chinese philosophy, the two components of Tao are yin and yang. Yin and yang have no fixed patterns. For example, the palm and back of my hand are yin and yang. My chest and back are yin and yang. My inner and outer self are yin and yang. There are shadows and the sunny side. The side with shadows is the yin side. Good and bad things are also balanced. Even if your ability is very strong, somewhere there's a person with exactly the skills to deal with you. That person and situation are meant to counter you. It's like they are tailor-made for you. That's why the Chinese draw the symbol of the Tao as a circle with a yin yang fish in the middle. True yin and yang are mixed and indistinguishable. For example, the greater your greed, the greater your disaster. The greater your evil, the higher the righteousness that counters you. It may be even higher, just like how the Buddha subdued the monkey. With a wave of his hand, he was trapped. It was done in an instant. Liu Kang was not his match. You are just a small, insignificant person. There will always be someone better than you, someone stronger than you, someone who opposes you. In this world, no one is an absolute success. Just like the four types of people we just mentioned. If you lack virtue and cultivation and you also lack ability, I've seen kids with no capabilities who are arrogant. They can't do anything, but they say they want to be president. They do have grand ambitions. But between their actions and their ambitions, I see impossible odds for success. Because they don't learn anything and lack knowledge. People become wise through knowledge. With wisdom, one can achieve greater things. If you don't learn anything, you won't have wisdom. What can you achieve then? The second type is those with some ability, like Sun Wukong. He is quite capable. When he fights his opponents, he is quite strong. Today, he would be a world champion, like a boxing champion. But even this will fail because he has no virtue. Without virtue, he won't be able to empathize with others, to understand others, to put himself in others' shoes. He only cares about satisfying himself. He has a hypocritical heart, a hurtful heart, and an arrogant mindset. Sun Wukong has abilities but no virtue. All the Sun Wukongs out there should be careful. For example, in contemporary terms, I attended a very prestigious university. 
I was also a top student. But I know many such outstanding young students who get fired quickly after joining the company, or they quit soon after. Why? It's their arrogance. I graduated from a prestigious university. Say, the employee is a PhD graduate from Harvard, but what about their boss? He might be from an unknown school or didn't go to college. You become arrogant toward your boss, often criticizing and giving him orders. With such arrogance, do you think the employee will work well? He looks down on his boss. Will he contribute well to the company? It's impossible, right? So, they get fired quickly. In the end, when looking for jobs, many highly educated people are feared by many employers. They end up all show and no substance. They don't lack knowledge, but their state of mind is too low. This is called having education but lacking character. They are difficult to employ. When we have a bit of background, a bit of academic achievement, and even when some people enter the workforce, they might earn a lot of money. But it doesn't mean that the next step will be successful. In every country, in every era, there is always a group of very smart and capable people, almost universally recognized as genius students. After working for 10 years, around the age of 35 to 38, they have a bit of success. Some became wealthy, some were hired by big companies with high salaries. They have both power and ability. But this does not determine that they are truly successful. It just means they are enjoying a bit of initial success. True success is when your entire life is successful. Why do I say this? I know many people, and many have sought my advice. They once made a lot of money, but then they lost all the money they earned. Or they were swindled out of it. Or they exhausted it themselves. Some men were deceived by women. This state is called a fate more fragile than paper. I offer this reminder or my thoughts for those who want to become wealthy in the future. Not just creating wealth, but also keeping it, besides having high intelligence. You also need to possess noble virtues. And even then, just these two qualities may not be enough. There is a third factor. Only when you've truly experienced the torment of poverty will you cherish money. And you will absolutely cherish every penny earned through your own hard work. You won't invest recklessly. You won't be easily deceived. You won't spend carelessly. Only then can you preserve your wealth. Becoming wealthy in the long term is true wealth. Becoming wealthy temporarily is not true wealth. For a person to achieve great success, you must learn to endure a lot of hardship. Only by enduring the hardest hardships can one become a better person. The experience and tempering of hardship make a person strong, cautious, and diligent. Also, it teaches self-control over various thoughts and desires. Only then can one become truly reliable and a wise, successful person. After 500 years, who will rescue Sun Wukong? Stay tuned for the next episode.
就此欢喜，我快乐了，我健康了，我幸福了，我美丽了。在茫茫人海之中，让我与你相遇，小小的红点。人生变得神奇，我智慧了。